real Python has changed the view of myself as a programmer and kind of eliminated some of what a, a lot of creatives feel like imposter syndrome. It's really given me the ability to have conversations with other developers and understand and speak the same language. My name is Bob Frederick and I work in the architecture industry, the built environment industry. I'm what's called a computational designer um, at a place that's a multidisciplinary design firm. We do architecture, landscape, and other public work, as well as product design and graphic design. I live and work in Los Angeles, California. It's funny because with the work that I was doing, you know, there's a lot of automation for the building environment. So we have a lot of technical information about how architects design their world. And so when we're thinking about that, we're thinking constantly of ways to help them design more and focus less on the kind of like data driven aspects. So Python finds its way into our work in ways that help, you know, not just automation, but in ways of helping designers come up with new creative ideas. So kind of like creative coding in a way. Um, but foremost to all of that stuff is really understanding how to, how to write the language really efficiently. I feel like real Python works for me in a way that's really flexible. I have two children. And so the way it works for me is that it, ha it has a way of tracking your kind of interests, you know, and recommending new courses to you. But the email digest, the Slack channel, um, the open office hours, all of those things are a really low barrier entry into access to their community. So you can kind of at your own pace, feel like how you want to learn, you know, is like accessible. It's not kind of curriculum driven. It's really based on your own individual interests and your desires to grow as a programmer yourself. So I really love that flexibility. When I look at the value that Real Python has brought to my career, um, it's almost like having a mentor at my side, you know, at a, you know, I'm a single developer basically at my office. So I'm like one of one. The language is really conducive to that. And so, Having real Python and the diverse set of kind of offerings, both the, you know from just the podcast and also the community on Slack and this and the and all the channels that you can kind of access, and the comments and articles, those really provide like an almost like virtual mentor for me. And um, I think I've seen the change. And when I was actually, you know, now I'm authoring tools in my office that a lot of the people are using across the office, and I think. That's a really big win for me. And I think I couldn't have gotten there without having a resource like Real Python to consistently go back to and check my understandings and my learnings. I would totally recommend Real Python to anyone. The nice thing is it's um, you know month to month subscription. There's no pressure, but it's also great to just have something um, with such a diverse set of offerings to, to engage in, right? So you're not just getting the website when you when you sign up, you're getting all these other things. And so taking full advantage of it, I think is really where you start to see the value uh, of the subscription. Real Python is really a great resource for someone who's coming up from a kind of like maybe a creative field or another field and wanting to kind of build those strong building blocks on how to really use the language in a, in a way that fits with the Python community. And I think that's the other thing about Real Python is that the community that surrounds it is probably the best part of why I've stuck with it for so long.